China is pledging a $1 trillion infrastructure program. And there's an article in Truth Dig say why China is running circles around America. So Trump saw this and said, we're gonna do a $1.5 trillion thing, but I'll get into the article, it's in the show notes below. But his is really only $200 billion of federal money and the rest is supposed to come from states and cities, but states and cities are completely depleted, so it's gonna to have to come from private funding, which means it'll be, <laughs> you know, it'll be deregulated and corrupt and wrong. Not that China, China has a lot of corruption and stuff like that, but when it's like, I've talked about this numerous times in 2015, China said, we're gonna spend $111 billion on wind and solar production, and they did it. And it was almost three times more than what we spent that year and what we typically spend. So it's very interesting because it's showing that China is trying to become an economic superpower, which they can do. And we're gonna lose our footing. And we, as I've, as I've said numerous times, we could be lighting the way of the world. And it's not like, we gotta be a superpower. It's, we could be this green energy superpower. We could literally light the way with, with wind turbines and solar panels and give everybody a job. And we could just be this model country. We could be this model country that has little to no crime that has little to no homelessness, that has little to no unemployment, that has great uh, free healthcare, that has college, that has, we could have all this thing. We could have all these things. We could be the model for the rest of the world. We have this declaration of independence. We have this constitution. We could be this thriving representative democracy. Instead, we're just, we've been hijacked by corporations over the last four decades and we are just, a surveillance state and a war empire and China is taking us over. So this is uh, China's policy. It's called One Belt, One Road, $1 trillion infrastructure initiative. It's a massive undertaking involving highways, pipelines, trans transmission lines, ports, power stations, fiber optics, and railroads connecting China to Central Asia, Europe, and Africa. I've, I've talked to stories about this. So China is investing in railroads and infrastructure in Africa because they see the potential there. And um, they're doing it under sort of humanitarian pretense, but it's really for their economy, which we could do too. Instead of bombing the Middle East, we could be um, building up its infrastructure which would eliminate terror. You give people jobs and education, they're less likely to become terrorists. They just want their family to be in a safe environment like any human being. So we could be doing this around the world, but we're not. China doesn't have the big military and they're realizing they're gonna do it with the economy and commerce. Uh, so according to Dan Slane, uh, a former advisor in Trump's transition team, it's the largest infrastructure project initiated by one nation in the history of the world and is designed to enable China to become the dominant economic power in the world. This is what Dan Slane says. If we don't get our act together very soon, we all be brushing up on our Mandarin. It just shows how dumb this country's been and how greedy and arrogant we are. We should be leading the way. We could be helping the whole world. We could be putting Americans to work all over the world and building up the infrastructure all over the world. We could help elevate all these countries out of poverty. We could do that. We could do that, but we don't want to. We want to profit from war and greed and fossil fuels and stupidity and moronic behavior. On February 12th, Trump's own infrastructure initiative was finally unveiled. Yeah, but as I said, it's not 1.5 trillion and Donald Cohen observes in the American prospect, it's only 200 billion. Um, the focus on the immunization plan is on public-private partnerships, which as Slain notes, are not suitable for many of the most critical infrastructure projects because the lack, they lack the sort of ongoing funding stream, such as a toll or fee, that would attract private investors. Public-private partnerships also drive up costs compared with financing through municipal bonds. 
uh, deregulate, that's the Republican way. And then everybody gets fucked and only the one percenters profit and you and I and everybody else gets shitty stuff. Naked capitalism blogger Eve Smith observes, private equity firms are not much interested in public assets and to the extent that they are, they are more interested in privatizing existing infrastructure than in funding the new development that is at the heart of the president's plan. Oh yeah, privatize, privatize. They've been screaming that for decades because privatization benefits people like Dick Cheney. Dick Cheney was the guy that pushed to privatize all the stuff in the military. So before Halliburton, which he owned and profited from, it used to be you had the army did its own cooking and cleaning and, and all that. But no, Halliburton's kind of come in for three times the cost <laughs> and it's supposedly supposed to be better. And there was documentaries made about Halliburton was... Um, not giving the military the, the best. They were cheating them because they were bilking money. This is, this is what privatization actually looks like. It's more greed. It's like a pallet of $900 million in cash just disappeared somewhere in Iraq. The White House says the initiative is not a take it or leave it proposal, but the start of a negotiation and that the president is open to new sources of funding, but no one in Congress seems to have a viable proposal. Perhaps it's time to look more closely at how China does it. While American politicians argue endlessly about where to find the money, cut the military budget in half. See, China doesn't have a crazy seven, eight hundred trillion dollar, whatever military budget. They spend like two, three hundred billion dollars a year. That's why America outspends the next seven countries combined. China has a military. Yeah, they feel like they need one. Okay. But they spend the rest of their money on infrastructure, which is probably putting a lot of Chinese people to work. A case in point is 12,000 miles of high-speed rail that they're putting in China. 12,000 miles. We could have high-speed rail from coast to coast. You could get from cities like uh, LA to, to San Francisco is about a five, six hour drive. You could get there in two and a half hours on a high-speed rail. You could get to Vegas in an hour and a half. You could get to, like, it's, it's just ridiculous. You could get from LA to Chicago in, you know, Instead of three days on the train, you could do it in 18 hours on high-speed rail. As American politicians are still trying to fund much more modest rail projects, the money largely came from loans from China's state-owned banks. The country's five largest banks are majority owned by the central government and they lend principally to large state-owned enterprises. Yeah, government-owned banks or non-for-profit banks. Where do the banks get the money? Basically, they print it. Not directly, not obviously, but as the Bank of England has acknowledged, banks do not merely recycle existing deposits, but actually create the money they lend by writing it into their borrower's deposit accounts. Incoming deposits are needed to balance the books, but at some point, these deposits originated in the deposit accounts of other banks. Because the Chinese government owns most of the country's banks, it can, it can aim this funding fire hose at its most pressing national needs. China's central bank, the People's Bank of China, issues money for infrastructure in an even more direct way. It has turned to an innovative form of quantitative easing in which liquidity is directed not at propping up the biggest banks, but at surgical strikes into the most productive sectors of the economy. Citigroup chief economist William uh, Buter calls the quantitative easing to distinguish it from quantitative easing engaged by Western banks. Wow. It's amazing. This is an amazing article. So it's, it's where all this money is coming from and how they're doing it. Here's what America, America could be doing this. America could be doing this. Here's an option here at the end of the article. What alternatives are left for cash strapped state and local governments? Unlike the Fed, they cannot issue money directly, but they can establish their own banks. 50% of the cost of infrastructure is financing, so having their own banks would allow them to cut the cost of infrastructure nearly in half. The savings on infrastructure projects with an income stream could then be used to fund those critically necessary projects that lack the income stream. For a model, they can look to the century-old Bank of North Dakota, currently the nation's only publicly owned depository bank. Sounds like we need more. The Bank of North Dakota makes 2% loans to local communities for infrastructure, far below the 12% average sought by private equity firms. Those are the evil asshole banks. Yet as noted in the 2014 Wall Street Journal article, the Bank of North, North Dakota is more profitable than Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan Chase. Did you hear that? The nation's only public-owned depository bank is more profitable than Goldman Sachs 
and JP Morgan, JP Morgan Chase. Before submitting to exploitation by public-private partnerships, state and local governments would do well to give the BND model further study. Publicly owned banks, non-for-profit banks, reasonable 2% loans to small business owners, 2% loans on infrastructure. Wow, sounds like banks are allowed to make a little bit of profit, the community benefits versus big, evil, private Wall Street banks taking all the profit, don't give a fuck about the infrastructure. See the difference? That's why we need progressive leadership, guys. That's why we need real progressive leadership. Every time they try to come at you, the Republicans, the conservatives, the corporate Democrats, all the, the, the sellout 1% are assholes that don't give a shit about you and me. When they go, oh, we can't afford it. How we can do this? Here's an, there's always an example to refute their bullshit. There's always an example to refute their bullshit. Every time. Here's another one. Thanks for watching the show.